So welcome everyone again to Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks. Um, we have a fun layout for you today. If you need a copy of the handout, you'll find it in the first comment on the um, the uh, comments for this live, or you can see it if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the um, description of the video. So um, the layout for today, it was a Christmas layout on the Creative Memories blog from 2019 using Merry Little Christmas. I'm going to be using it with Leave Nothing Behind. Um, I have some photos of, I believe my parents took my oldest back when he was four to Sedona. I actually have to clarify with my mom that they went to Sedona and not someplace else. I'm pretty certain it's Sedona. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my tabletop and you guys can see what we've got. So I've got my hand out here. And um, in my defense, I really thought I was going to do a Christmas layout, but then I was like, man, you know, I, I had these photos that I printed and, and they're actually from right after Christmas. Um, the date on the back says uh, December 27th. So it was a post Christmas trip, little um, daytime field trip that my parents took with my oldest, Kevin, who's my, this is my college freshman back when he was four, just over four. So he always wore these white hats. He just loved the hats. But to be fair, he loves the hats because, well, grandpa wore the hats, right? So those are those fun memories where he would love to wear the stuff that grandpa wore. So he loved his wide brim hats and he still wears hats all the time to this day, but they're just typical ball caps now. But for today's layout, um, what I really liked about this, and I will tell you guys, when I'm looking for layouts to do as part of Scrapbook Live, I love to find things that I know I can take um, and do a little bit more with, do something a little bit different. So when I saw this layout, I was like, oh, I love it, but it's only got two photos, right? It's hard when you only have two photos and you guys are like me and you know you have more than just two photos that you need to put into a layout. But you're like, I love this layout. I think it's so cute. So how could I add more layout, have more photos to this? Well, immediately I saw, I've got this big decorative area right here, right? So my thought was, well, let's use peekaboo pockets. And ultimately what's gonna happen is this area that has all of these circles on it is gonna flap open to expose ultimately 12 more inches of background that I will be able to add photos to. So I think I have a total of seven photos that are gonna go on this layout. I'm not gonna be using a full mat in this location here. They do show you using a full mat there. What I'm gonna be doing is having three photos, a partial title here, and then this will all flap open to show more photos, but I can still have that fun decorative element on this page. So I've got my peekaboo pockets here. This is the six by 12 peekaboo pockets. If you have not used these, these are fantastic. Um, definitely add some of the peekaboo pockets to your next order. And my photos, um, I've already done a little bit of pre-cropping. I will have to make some adjustments to the measurements here. So the measurements that I give, or that are listed here, these are copied and pasted from the blog, um, giving you the directions on how to make this exact layout. I'm gonna be making some adjustments. One of the areas that I am adjusting is this with these four stripes. They have that total width is only going to be about five and a half inches. I need it to be a full six inches so that it takes up that six inch width of my peekaboo pocket. So where they talk about here at the bottom, they are actually building this entire layout on the white plaid paper that you see here. So we, they show using three, the one, two, and three, the green, red, and dark green strips that are one and a half inch each. I am actually gonna go ahead and widen this out and have four strips each be one and a half inches. That's gonna give me that full six inch width that I need to fill my peekaboo pocket. So I'm gonna build those stripes on, I have a piece here. I'm gonna be building everything on the hot fudge cardstock. So I have a 12 by 12 piece that I'm gonna build my base page on. And then I have another piece that I have cut to six by 12 inches. This will go in my peekaboo pocket. So I'm actually gonna go ahead. I think I'm just gonna um, decide what we'll put together first. They want us to go ahead and start and build the left side of the page first. And they use uh, mats, the larger, a, um, the larger four and a half by six and a half inch mats from the variety mat pack, they use those and they just stack them up here and then they put their photos on it. 
I am not going to do that because I didn't have enough mats. Um, I've already used a lot of my mats from the Leave Nothing Behind collection. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use paper. And let me figure out, I had already chosen my papers that were going to do this. And I think it's these three are going to be those, uh, replace my mats. Now, the other thing that I need to do here, these mats that they tell us, I can tell you right here, they're six and a half inches wide but I don't need my mats to be six and a half inches wide. I only need them to be six inches because remember, I am gonna bring over my peekaboo pocket and cover up six inches. So I need my mats to be six inches wide. They're gonna be six inches wide. And let, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna make all my mats, I'm gonna make my mats six, and a, six inches wide by four and a half tall. I think I'll be overlapping some, but that's how I'm gonna do it. So grab my trimmer, move some of my items out of the way. I've got my three colors or my three papers that I'm choosing from. If you have mats, you won't need to necessarily do any of these cutting. If you're using the six and a half by um, four and a half inch mats, you won't need to, you can just follow the directions exactly. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my papers. Um, these papers are non-directional. So to conserve as much paper as I can, I am gonna go ahead and just cut these, each of these four inches, or excuse me, four and a half inches wide. So four and a half, I'm gonna cut them to four and a half by six. So there's the four and a half. And then open up my arm and bring this out to six inches. This piece here is gonna be, well, they're the same. It's scrap though, set it aside. Same thing, four and a half. And trim to six inches. Last piece here, I'm gonna to go to four and a half. and go six inches wide. Grab my mat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pieces on. I've already got my photos selected <clears throat> that will go here, so I've got horizontal photos that I'm gonna be working with. I have trimmed all of these down. They are, um, instead of being the full six inches wide that the layout asks for, the directions, I've trimmed mine down by a quarter of an inch. And they are now down to, um, to five and a quarter, to five and three quarters. I might need to trim them further but I was gonna wait until I kind of had everything going and then I'll do some additional trimming. But I've got three horizontal photos right here that I'll be putting. And I'm gonna do a quick, just um, putting these things to pieces together, just do a dry fit. There's gonna be some overlapping. You would have overlapping um, if you were using mats. And I might need to cut things down a little bit. Let's see, I think I had this picture at the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna have to trim. I should have trimmed these down to five and a half inches instead of, so I'm gonna need to do some additional trimming. I cut these at four and a half inches. I am gonna go ahead, especially this bottom one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to four and a quarter. I'm gonna take off a quarter of an inch. If you look in the original, you can see they've got a lot of space here for this. The bottom photo is a true, you know, the cut to the four and a half by six and a half. And then the, these next two are a little bit narrower. They've overlapped a little bit more. So if I was to do that, Thank you. 
I would need to tuck the photo in a little bit more, which I could do. You can do, you just tuck your photos in, tuck them under. The downside is, like for this one here, I think what I wanna do is I want a little bit more space. I don't need quite as much here at the top on this photo, so I'm gonna trim. I'm gonna take it down to three and three quarters. So I'm cutting a quarter inch off the top. I have plenty of blue sky there at the top, so that's not a problem. And then I need to go ahead and trim it down to four and a half or to um, five and a half inches wide. So I need to cut another quarter of an inch off. I have a very, very squeaky trimmer. As you can tell, it's old, it's older. Oops, that one got a little bit too short. We'll see here. I trimmed one of them a little bit narrower than I meant to. So I'm gonna give all, all three of them, or the other two, just a quick. There we go. So now I've got this, this mat here is at four and a half. I'm gonna bring it into four and a quarter. It's not covered up. This one doesn't tuck behind others. So I need it to be, just to give myself a little bit more space. So there I've got an even mat all the way around it. Go ahead and tuck this one in, giving myself that even mat. And then this one here at the top. So there we go. Now I've got my photos, how they're going to sit in there. Bring it up just a little bit closer. You can see this bottom one is fully in place and the other two are just kind of tucked in. So let me go ahead and put these, get all these things put on. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here at the top. This is the top of my photo. If I flip it over, you can see this is my top. I'm gonna to put my adhesive down so that way I can tuck those other pieces behind it. I could have started at the top and built it in, but um, it's just, I don't know, works better for my brain. As long as I don't push down too hard, I can still move things around even though I'm using the permanent, the, the regular tape runner. Get the photo put in place. Um, I definitely could have, I see a comment, I could have um, go ahead, I could have made them um, four inches to not overlap. Uh, so you could, you could do it either way. Um, I did it this way just to give myself a little bit more flexibility. This one here, um, when you, the way the photos are, as you can see, only this bottom one has the, um, border at the bottom. So I wanted to be able to actually make sure when I space it, that it was just easier for me to have that there's no bottom border to this one. And in my mind, it just worked better just to slide the paper or to slide it under, um, you could obviously put it together however works for you. All right. 
So got those pieces in place. Give everything a nice bit of pressure so they stay in place. Now, um, one of the things I wanna do here on this side, because I already know, just have to find, there is a, oh, there it is. There is a mat that says never stop exploring. You guys can see it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use it as a bar that comes right across this photo here. So it looks like I'm just shy of having that be the four inches. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick cut to make it a fairly narrow bar. I need to trim off just a little bit on the side. A little bit more. Well, actually I can just tuck it under. And that actually helps the composition of this particular photo. Um, you can see my son was a little bit shoved to the side. So it kind of centers him in that photo and just takes up and just puts that, gives me that title there. So there is the left side of the page. Now, if I was building this without the peekaboo pocket, I could just go ahead and add my strips, add my dots, and we'd be good to go. For the moment, I'm going to leave this, um, this alone. I'm going to set this to the side and we'll come back to it after I built my peekaboo pocket. All right, so for the peekaboo pocket, like I said, I'm starting off with a piece of six by 12 hot fudge cardstock. I'm gonna be adding the stripes to that. So I need four stripes that are an inch and a half each. That's gonna give me my six inch width. I could only put three on here if I wanted to and leave that brown, the dark brown coming through, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the, um, do four in the colors. And the colors I've chosen, I got the lovely kind of the pumpkin terracotta -y, orangey color, the blue or aqua um, paper that um, from these are all from the uh, leave nothing behind. I believe these are out of the designer pack. There's a tonal pack and a designer pack or no, it's a texture pack um, and the designer pack. These are all out of the designer pack, kind of the more of olive green and the dark green. So I need an inch and a half of each of these. So go ahead and give these all a cut. I'm gonna be cutting to the, to the right side. Give me that inch and a half. So I'm coming out to inch and a half on the right edge. I'm looking at the back side of my paper, knowing when I cut it, that I wanna cut this direction. I want my, the other side to maintain a certain orientation. So there's an inch and a half. And then the last paper, this dark green, it does have, it has um, animal uh, uh, footprints, animal tracks, that's it, on the back side of it. I'm not too picky on which direction this one goes, so we'll just cut it. There we go. Now, the one thing I do, I am gonna grab my layout because I want to make sure I put these on here in an order that kind of makes sense. So I think I was going to start out with the dark green next to it. And I think I actually have the light green, the blue, and the terracotta. So those are the colors. One thing I could do here, if I wanted to cut my papers a little bit narrower, I could come in with a little bit of brown sticking between them. I still could. 
if I wanted to have that little bit of the brown, the striping effect, I don't think it's super apparent on camera. I can show you, I already have some of the um, little dots pre-cut, so I could come in here and just kind of put those in place. I may actually leave. I am just tossing these in here to kind of give myself that, an idea of what do I think? Do I want to leave a little bit of space? Or do I want to I kind of like it with the spacing. I don't know if you guys can, you know, see what you think about having those dark lines in between. I think I like it. Uh, just a little bit more um, depth to the color range, right? Yeah, you know, Gail's saying leave the space. So I think I will. All right, so now I'm gonna slide these all off and we'll build this front peekaboo pocket. I'll come back and talk about these pieces in just a little bit. Um, I steered off course kind of from what uh, Creative Memories suggested in their handout because um, I just did. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put this together. I'm gonna use my mat to help me put these strips on straight and to keep that, um, I'm gonna try to do about an eighth of an inch. If you look at my little pieces here, you can see I have about an eighth of an inch of the brown exposed. So that's gonna give me a similar spacing between these pieces. So I will leave myself an eighth of an inch on this edge. This, this is the edge that's next to my photos. So we'll give myself that eighth of an inch. And do the same here. Give myself an eighth of an inch. Using my cutting mat to help keep that does make a huge difference. And I am going to end up a little bit short over here. I'm going to have to trim off because I have those inch and a half pieces and I'm losing, I am losing a half inch to my striping, but that's going to be okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I could have cut all these pieces a little bit narrower, but I'm not going to worry about trying to cut off that eighth of an inch. That's just, when I'm working with this narrow of a piece, it's probably asking for disaster and it's okay if they're not the same. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna cut this edge flush with the back. I won't leave that eighth of an inch margin on the outside of the peekaboo pocket because I don't think it's needed. And it does give me more of that brown edge here. So. I think if I were to redo it, I, or if I thought about it more, I probably would have gone ahead and cut these all at an inch and um, three eighths instead of inch and a quarter and not have had to sacrifice so much of that orange color. But I think it's fine. It's going to work out. It's a, one of those details that I know, um, but nobody else looking at this is going to care. Okay, so we've got that done. So now um, what I need to do is... Um, I need to imagine how I want this to look now if I wasn't doing the peekaboo pocket. Now, like if I was putting on my all my circles. So when I made my circles, 
I started out using the circle punch because I don't know, it's delightful, right? It's just so quick and easy. And it's an inch and three quarters. So I did the inch and three quarter here. And then I used circle number two with the blue blade to make a circle. The challenge was, is the circle I made, I didn't think had quite enough. So here's, I punched this with the circle punch, inch and three quarters. I cut this with circle number two, this one right here, with circle number two and the blue blade. But I didn't think they was enough separation, right? There, you just can't see enough. So then what I decided to do is, okay, well, let me cut it with the green blade. So I have a slightly larger circle. Well, then, I mean, we're going to Goldilocks and the three bears here. I, I was a little too big. But then what I realized, leave nothing behind as I've worked with this collection, looks fantastic if you do bring in some of that dark sea green. So this is the hot fudge cardstock. You bring in some of the dark sea green, or maybe it's called deep sea green, one of the, the D words there. I think of it as DSG. If you bring in this lovely blue, it just looks phenomenal. So what I did is I actually double matted it. So I've got that real thin bit of that, the dark sea green with the hot fudge. So all of my pieces were done that way. And it just brings in that little bit of extra. So I made seven of them. I actually have eight here um, because you'll see when I use them in the peekaboo pocket, I'm going to carry them into the inside. Um, so Jill's asking a question, is it okay to adhere each side first and then fill in the other two? Um, yeah, you probably, are you talking about these stripes, Jill? You probably could do that. Um, the spacing is just going to be, if you leave that eighth of an inch space, I would cut those pieces a little bit narrower to begin with. All right, so there we go. So now it's a matter of just where do I want to put these on here? So I'm imagining that this is when my peekaboo pockets close, this is what it's going to look like. And where do I want to go? Now I could, I mean, Creative Memories has already done the spacing for me, right? Actually, they have eight on here. I can see they do have eight. I, for some reason I counted seven, but it's eight. I could just follow their spacing. They do incorporate a little bit of journaling here, um, which I don't know that I'm necessarily going to do that. Um, I think my journaling might be on the inside. So I'm gonna just worry about getting my pieces spaced. I have uh, the two where I have duplicates of things. I want to space those a little bit separate from each other. I have this beautiful, this piece right here, I actually cut out of a mat. That's the fantastic part about using mats. You can grab some additional coloring. Um, I could have punched this color, but I really wanted to get some of that white in there as well. So I punched it from the mat. I'll still be able to use this mat with um, photos. it will cover up the hole. If I needed to, um, since um, I could have cut out the middle first and then punched, or you could use, obviously use the custom cutting system and be able to work your circle in this as a spot. However, I had cut all my circles with the punch, so I needed to do that again to make sure I was consistent with my sizing. And one of these little circles is actually gonna hang off the side. And I'm actually going to put that on the um, outside of my peekaboo pocket as kind of my little flap that'll help lift it up. So let's see here. I actually think I like that spacing. I may not worry about trying to get the eighth one on here. So I'm gonna go with that. I have an eighth one. I'm not gonna worry about putting it on. I'm gonna leave this just as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these all in place.
a couple of them do hang over. I will need to trim those off, the ones that hang over here on these edges. This one will hang over, but it won't be trimmed. It, in fact, I won't even be adhering it right now. I will be waiting until I put the peekaboo pocket, put this piece in the peekaboo pocket. I just love the colors of this Leave Nothing Behind. It's a great, just for outdoors. It does have a Southwest um, tilt to it, I guess you'd say. It has a lot of the red rocks. You think of Sedona, Monument Valley, of going up into, if you go out anywhere, Bryce Canyon, um, into um, the Grand Canyon, over into um, Zion. But, um, you know, there's a lot of other elements in here that would work well as for other locations that are not just the Southwest. So we got those pieces all in place, except for this one. Let me do a quick trim. I'm going to just use some scissors. Got a lot of layers here. Just easier to trim that up with scissors. There we go. Okay, so there's the front side of my peekaboo pocket. Now what I can do is open this up and there you guys can see my 12 inches. I have a whole other page that I can um, uh, do this. So um, Jackie's asking where these photos were taken and Jackie, I think they were taken in Sedona. It was done uh, 15 years ago, and I need to ask my parents if they went to Sedona or the Superstition Springs um, because I'm not seeing Bell Rock in here, but I'm almost positive they took him to Sedona instead of Superstition Springs. But maybe they went, so I say Sedona, but we should just say they're taken in desert Arizona somewhere because, yeah, I'm having one of those moments that I need to get some clarification from my mom. <laughs> So um, inside here, I've got some other photos I'm going to be working with. I've got a picture of, let's see, I was going to use a mat, one of the four and a half by six and a half inch mats, and I was going to use this photo with it, him just standing there. There's a picture of my dad and him together. And here's another one where he's just kind of pointing off. And I have a, a picture of my mom and him together there too. So these are the inside. And this arrangement is nothing overly exciting. It's mostly going to be hidden until you open it up. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually bring these photos over. I'm going to cut myself an inch and a half, another strip of paper, an inch and a half wide. And I think I'm going to do this spruce paper. There are some... Um, textures that are similar to this pulls in a little bit of that um, pumpkin -y brown color so I think that'll work well. I'm gonna do an inch and a half but though before I do that let me just measure. If I do an inch and a half I'm gonna do an inch and five eighths just a little bit bigger. I am going to leave that eighth of an inch on both sides of that paper. And when I put these photos on, I need to do a little bit of trimming. I've got some plenty of space to do trimming on these photos at the top and the bottom. I'm going to give myself so that they have just a little bit of that brown all the way around. I'm not going fancy. This is, you know, not 
It's very basic. And then I will be able to come in here and I won't use this one. I'll probably put, do another one, but you can see I can come in with another one of those circle details and um, put that in place. I'm not gonna use this one. I will find another one. I'll make another one. So this was a two pay or two photo layout and we've expanded it. I'm gonna have seven total photos on here. Making those little adjustments, expanding it with the peekaboo pocket is always a great idea. If I really wanted to, if I thought I had a lot of journaling that I could do, I could actually peekaboo pocket this one right here. This is a four by six. And I could do a peekaboo pocket here if I had more photos, if I had a journaling box that I wanted to put in here and have, if I had a whole story to tell with this, I don't. It was 15 years ago. I didn't go. Uh, my parents, they, they left me at home with the one-year-old. Uh, my middle child was a year old at the time, and that was fine. That was perfect. They took Kevin out, got out of the house with him, and I was able to stay at home enjoy a little bit of peace and quiet. You guys know how that goes, right? You just want a little bit of peace and quiet after the holiday chaos. My middle child um, was a napper, loved to nap, would grab her blankie. She had her thumb already attached and would just lay down and sleep. So there we go. That's pretty much how it's going to look. This of course will flap shut. Let me put these in place. I am gonna add, um, make a couple additional pieces of those. I do have some um, stickers that I could add. I might offset this this way. And this gives me space right here to write either Sedona or wherever they went. So I've got to figure out a way to, um, I've got to ask my mom. I got to just send her a message or my dad, my dad might remember too. Like, did you guys go to Sedona? I'm pretty certain that's where they went. Um, but just to, to make sure that I title it correctly, my son won't remember. I'm not even sure if I showed him these pictures. There's a certain age. I don't know whether it's seven or eight or what they, that your memories start to be more clear and consistent. Otherwise we rely a lot on photos. Um, so this is probably one of those ages where he'll, we, we rely on the photos to remind him that, yes, I went to some place with my grandparents. So now for the peekaboo pocket, I've got my base. This is my basic page. This is what would be attached either to my Jeeped page or I use top loading pages. So I would slide this in my top loading page. Once I had everything done, I've got to do a title. I might still come in with, um, adding you know, um, one of these other circle details just to keep that continuity going of that additional element. And then my peekaboo pocket. So here is a peekaboo pocket has a flap. The, um, the adhesive is on the back side. I'm pretty certain that's where it is. And there you just lift up the clear strip there. You can see, I'm starting to pull that away and I've exposed the adhesive. And that would gets mounted to my, either my page protector or it gets mounted to my um, uh, top loading page. If I was doing this on a Jeeped page, I could actually put this on my page first or I could adhere it to the back side of my, my layout and it would flap over the front. I could do that. However, I use top loading pages, so I don't, I won't be doing that. So here it is. My flap is on the right side. The pocket is underneath and I'm going to slide this in. I'm a little snug. I think I need to trim. I've got my, I've got some overhang here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. I'm just a little snug trying to get it in there. No room for error on this is definitely six by 12.
So there we go. There's my, except for my photo fell off. And this one will get mounted to the front and can ultimately be what helps to maybe lift it up. You could use that as a flap to lift it up. So I'm not sure, I may actually attach that with, I gotta think about that, um, whether I'm gonna attach it using maybe some foam dots, give it a little bit more, um, the ability to, to lift it there if I wanted to. I think I'll do that. Now I don't have, I just have little foam dots. I'm gonna have, oh, here's some big ones. Hmm. I'm gonna put a foam dot on the outside over here. I'm just not gonna take the backing off. And probably what I'm gonna actually do is end up having to take that backing off because I want it to be supported, right? I don't want it to ultimately get bend and squish and you can see that. I'll probably have to take the backing off and um, put another um, so a piece of cardstock here so that I don't worry about losing. These things, the, the backing paper can come off so easily. I don't want it to get stuck. So I'll do that. I'll ultimately put some uh, cardstock there. I'll put some brown cardstock, cut a half circle, and put it on. So then here, you'll be able to lift this up, turn it over, and there's the inside of the layout. So yes, peekaboo pockets can be a little bit, um, you have to think about it. You know, a lot of times I put things in upside down. I don't take into consideration, oh, when I have my photo lifted up, the, the photo here needs to actually be upside down when you put it in, if you haven't, you know, if you're going from um, top to bottom with your flap. Um, but that is um, easily, easy enough to correct. So there's today's layout um, to, I th you know, just a little bit fun, something different, um, make those adjustments so you can add that peekaboo pocket, expand your layout into, um, to get more photos on there, right? So that's the big thing with some of these blog posts are the blog projects. They don't always have a ton of photos and they're single page layouts. So that sometimes is, you know, um, something to keep in mind. We love the layouts. They're visually very stunning. They do a fantastic job putting these um, projects together, uh, but they don't always have the most photos. So using peekaboo pockets, other strategies can allow you to get more photos onto the page. And this one just made sense. Make this flip it open and you've got it all set. So, all right, that was so much fun to put together. Um, I've got a little bit of a couple more details I'm going to add. Like I said, I need to confirm. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Sedona. Um, I just looking at it to me, it just doesn't quite look like Superstition Mountains area. Um, so I'm pretty certain it's Sedona. Lots of red there. Uh, but I will go ahead and get those details added. I've got to make um, a couple more of these little things. And it literally is just using the custom cutting system to make those nested circles. Super easy to do. Um, I do like that three quarter, uh, one and three quarter inch uh, square punch. It does make this super easy if you want to line up exactly. So, um, and you just punch right and there, you have your circles. So I will be putting those together, take some photos, get that shared with you. Um, before we go, I want to remind everyone that this is the virtual crop week. So there'll be six sketches that are gonna be shared um, between Friday and Saturday. I will have the measurements for those on my Facebook page. And um, I will also have a blog post on my blog at meganjacks.com where you'll be able to find these sketches with the measurements. So make sure you've subscribed to the Creative Memories blog so that you get the original sketches sent to you in your email that come in um, right on time. Uh, this, the crop will launch at 1, it's 1 p.m. Uh, Central Time. It's 11 a.m. Um, Pacific on Friday, and there'll be three sketches on Friday and then three sketches on Saturday. 
you have until I believe midnight on Sunday night to post that's midnight central time to post your layouts to the virtual crop group. Um, and then, like I said, on my Facebook page and also my Facebook group, I will have these sketches shared with the measurements. The um, the summary page, I know everybody loves getting those summary pages where it has all the sketches. I have changed that now into a three-page document. Um, just that those sketches be a little bit bigger so you can actually read the measurements. Um, and that will be shared in my Facebook group. I can't share it on my page because the, um, Facebook does not allow documents like PDFs to be shared on Facebook pages. They can be shared in groups. However, it will also be shared to my blog. So you can check and grab it there. The other thing coming up that I want to, um, remind you guys about, well, there's two things next week. So we, uh, just under a week from today is power hour, the December power hour. You can find out more details at meganandtessa.com. Um, and then also the big thing I do with Tessa coming up in January, we're going to be starting our winter frolic. So the winter frolic scrap challenge. So this is, if you've done our summer scrap challenge, or maybe you did winter frolic last year, it's very much going to be very similar. We are going to have, um, eight weeks in a private Facebook group where we're going to be every Monday sharing with you a challenge layout, giving you a bit of a challenge. When we say challenge. We just mean, you know, we're going to do maybe incorporate some tools you haven't used or a technique you haven't used in a while. But basically we want you to be able to come away with a page, um, that, you know, is ready for you to go, ready to go into your, um, your scrapbook. So we'll have, um, eight weeks of that on Monday. And then on Thursdays, we always have some sort of a throwback, um, or something else that's inspiring to us. It may be a layout that uh, uh, Tessa and I have um, done before. It may be something, uh, might be something from the Creative Memories blog. I've done shared um, stuff out of, um, inspired by the gals in Japan. So there's lots of just ways that we try to inspire you, keep you progressing through your projects. It's, you know, the winter can be really dark and dreary. It's something to look forward to and does help. It helps me get through those eight weeks of January and February, which are pretty dark still here in the Pacific Northwest. So definitely something I look forward to, but you can find out more details on how to register for that at meganandtessa.com. So I think that's all I have to share. We will, Tessa and I are planning to do a page makers class that will be sometime, I don't know, we're waiting to see what Creative Memories is going to be releasing. Um, and we're looking for a collection that has tonal papers, has designer papers, has those decorative elements. And then we will have something for you probably in the first quarter. Um, we'll find out what they're launching in January to see if that's going to be a collection that will work well for something like that. So those details hopefully will be coming soon once we get more information of what is coming out in January. So I hope everybody enjoyed today. Like I said, I will get this finished up. I'll post it. You guys can see it. Um, and I look forward to seeing what everybody creates this weekend for the virtual crop. That will be super exciting. Power hours coming up, um, winter frolic. I will, in terms of scrapbook live, I have one more that I'm doing in January or excuse me, in December next week for, so December 14th, we will have, um, scrapbook live. And then I'm taking two weeks off. Um, my kids are home from school. My college kids home. My kids are out of school holiday chaos. It's just going to be really a uh, challenge for me to be able to focus in on getting scrapbook live. So we're going to take a two week break and then we'll be back right after the first of the year. I don't even know what day that is. Um, like January 4th, maybe I can't remember my kids don't go back to school till January 3rd. So I've got a long time at home with them. I will be ready to get together with you guys all um, that first Wednesday in January. Um, and hope I, well, see if I have some crazy tales. Um, I never know what happens when all three kids get together. So everybody enjoy the rest of your week um, and uh, keep it scrappy. All right, we'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.